Hello and welcome to the Car Kernel channel and welcome to the 2023 Toyota Corolla. Toyota just updated the Corolla lineup, both the hatchback and the sedan. In this video, we're going to take a look at those changes from the technical side first, then we're going to look at the outside, the inside, and everything in between to see if those changes are good or not right after this. Let's do the technical review under the hood. So this information also applies to the sedan version of the, the Corolla, not just the hatchback. So there are two things, two major changes that Toyota did in 2023 for the Corolla. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. The first one is the engine. Would we take a second to say goodbye to the 2ZR FE engine? That engine has been around since 2009 in the Toyota Corolla, and for some reason, Toyota just kept going with it. It was a decent engine, but it was way too old, and what it, what it was replaced with was such a good engine, I don't know why they kept going with it, at least in the lower trims. But up to 2023, in the lower trims, you had the old engine, in the higher trims, you had the better engine. Now, we no longer had the 2ZR FE 1.8 liter in anything except the hybrid. That is completely different. We have one of my favorite Toyota engines that have been out for a little bit of time, the M20A FKS. This is a dynamic force engine, kind of like the A25A. I really like these engines. They're very efficient, and at the same time, they have decent power and they have amazing technology. I like technology, you guys know that. Some of the highlights of this engine, because we've talked about the A25A, which is, this is basically a two liter version of that. This engine has Toyota's D4S direct injection system. So basically you have direct and port at the same time. So issues like carbon buildup are not something that is guaranteed to happen. Actually, they might never happen with this engine because you have both systems. Something else that this engine has is the very clever VVTi system. You have a little electric motor on the intake side that speeds up and slows down to advance and retard timing instead of the traditional oil controlled variable valve timing. On the exhaust side, however, we do have that oil controlled one because you don't need to change the angle of the exhaust as much. You only need that change on the intake. Pretty clever system, and for reliability front, they've been out since 2018 in the Camry, the A25. Plenty of examples over 200,000 miles. Doesn't seem to have any issues. And the motors, not really difficult to replace. They just need a calibration. Simple one, two, three. Something else about this engine, it is with a plastic valve cover. Some people have voiced concerns over this, and I do have one concern about the 2023 model. If you look right here at the valve cover, it doesn't look like it's the best mold in the planet. And this is something, this is the first time I see a Toyota plastic valve cover that just looks extremely cheap made. But it's again, it's just the looks. I hope that is not the case, but this doesn't look good truth have to be said. Something else about this engine which will make some people cringe, this has EGR. Now, Toyota's had their fair share of problems with EGR. I mean, all you have to do is search 2010 Prius EGR problems and you will see pages and pages of problems. However, so far, up from 2018 to now, we have not had any issues with EGR with this engine or the A25. So, it's looking good. Fingers are crossed that we don't have issues five years from now. Now, some of the changes are not good stuff, at least for some of us out there. Maybe the older school ones, the newer, newer generation might not find that such a bad deal. It's official, folks. There is no longer a manual transmission in the Corolla hatchback and the Corolla sedan. Only the GR Corolla gets a manual transmission, and that is something of a surprise. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I can kind of understand it. I mean, their sales were not exactly shattering records there. So I can understand that decision. That's kind of a business decision from Toyota, I suppose, but it's still, it still, it hurts. Manual transmissions are awesome. Yes, at least we still have the GR Corolla, but you can't get a normal Corolla with a manual transmission anymore. Now, the only transmission option we have for the Corolla is the K120 CVT transmission. 
You know, the jury is out there on CVTs. Thank you, Nissan, for ruining the CVT reputation forever. But this CVT has been holding so far. But one thing about this CVT that makes it less CVT-like, this has a physical first gear. So at least your takeoff is not the typical drony takeoff. But once you get past first gear, it's drony. If you drive it like a normal human being, it won't be so bad, but if you are heavy on the throttle, it's gonna drone all the time, and that's just business as usual with CVT. Other than these changes, uh, this powertrain is exactly the same. There has not been any revisions, at least that I see or I have read in technical information. This is exactly the same as you'll find in a 2019 Corolla hatchback going all the way to now. It's exactly the same powertrain. And you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is a good engine, folks. There has not really been a lot of chronic issues, and people will say it hasn't been out long enough. It has been long enough, because usually the engines or the powertrains that have problems, they show up from year one to year two. We are in year three or four, depends how you look at it, or even more if you consider the A25. So I'm comfortable with this powertrain with the way it is, reliability-wise. I don't think they went too advanced and they went too much. I think this is a good powertrain. It's not powerful, it's not exhilarating, it's not thrilling, it's not gonna move your emotions, but it's reliable and it's decent. Let's take a look underneath the 2023 Toyota Corolla. The first thing, this has been business as usual, everything is completely covered up and that is very good. With the exception of one little thing that I'm noticing more of a trend off. If you look in the wheel well area, right here. So uh, our fender liner only goes halfway. The rest of it fully exposed. Now for folks in the rust belt area, this would be the place you should be undercoating. I don't know why we couldn't extend this all the way to the end. That's where they decided to end the fender liner. Not the end of the world, but something I've been noticing more and more of in newer cars. I guess that saves them a few bucks. And then we look at the front suspension. You have Toyota's timeless design here with the control arm separate from the ball joint. Very simple design, great for serviceability. Other thing is you have single piston caliper right here. Very simple, something to be expected in a car of this size. And something that is interesting, the knuckle is not aluminum here. It is actually steel. You'd expect a car like that to have aluminum knuckles, you know, keep it light and everything. But this one does not. And that is pretty interesting. Now, this car does have electric power steering. Nothing really special about that, but I just thought I'd mention it here. As we make our way back, you notice we have three pretty large braces here. And this actually adds more rigidity to the body, makes this car handle better. It's not the most exciting, fun handling car in the world, steering's too light and all that, but this helps a little bit. You know, at higher speed stability, it doesn't feel like it's gonna fly. And that's nice to see this Toyota kind of continuing on to that. As we make our way back, now this is, one of the two catalytic converters. This is just a resonator. This is widely exposed. You know, if we have catalytic converter theft and I wish they would start kind of putting shields or some kind of covering for this from the factory, but as of 2023, they don't, at least for the Corolla. As we wrap our way back, we look at the rear suspension. Of course, long gone is the beam suspension for Corollas. We have independent rear suspension. We have multi-link suspension or double wishbone in a way if you read the textbook it's not your typical double wishbone suspension but that's what they are calling it you got a coil spring right here shock in the front this is a nice suspension it's reliable it's simple it actually makes this car handle better than the beam suspension that corollas used to have in the past and the muffler sing single tip muffler very simple, actually, even though there's a sport model, it actually just comes down and stops. There's no tip, there's nothing. And they kept things pretty simple here underneath. This is basically a very familiar design to a lot of Toyotas these days, just 
different size arms and that's about it. But basically, once you've serviced one of them, you've serviced all of them because they're all designed the same way. And that's the whole idea here. Simplicity. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's take a look at the outside of the Corolla hatchback. And one thing has to be said, from day one that the Corolla hatchback came out, it's actually a pretty good looking car. That has to be said. Now, some of the things they updated in 2023, they're very, very subtle. Something like this little trim right here got changed. Very simple change, but it just gives it a different overall look. Now, the massive grill that they have over here remains the same, and it is somewhat similar to that of the GR Corolla. I guess that's what they were going with this. Now, if you look at this and the sedan, and this is where I feel like we talked about this in a review of the sedan before, this, the front and the back, look like they're from the same car. But the sedan, it almost looks like they took this and they just added a trunk to it. This looks off. But as we walk our way around, I like these headlights. I just like the design of them. It just, it's a different thing. I, there hasn't really been a Corolla that went this wild with their design. They have the big LED right here. I like it. And I think it's, it looks, you know, it's a youngster car. It looks pretty cool. Then with the XSE trim, we're gonna talk about the trim situation a little bit later in the video. They have these wheels, I think they're pretty cool wheels. I remember a day where if you get wheels this big, that was like a luxury car. But now you have that in the Corolla. As we wrap around the side, now the XSE trim does have a little bit of a different molding at the bottom, but this is where things kinda typical Toyota fashion. You have your supposed sport model with mud flaps completely intrude on the kind of the body lines of this car but that's what they went with as we wrap our way in the back and this is potentially my favorite part of this car it just just look at this thing it looks nice i like the way it looks i feel like you look at these tail lights they kind of mimic what we got going on in the front and it just gives it feels like this is the same car you look at the sedan it doesn't have the same feeling I really like this particular corner right here. There's a lot going on design-wise. You got a curve here, another curve here, then a double curve here, but it just gives it character. I think this looks really cool. Now, the reflectors are kind of odd and they're standing there. This is a federal requirement, so I think if these reflectors were not there, this would look cleaner, but that's the design they went with. You got a Little wiper here, it's not hidden at the top or anything. Again, you expect that from a model like the Corolla. One interesting thing about this model. So, for some reason, the there's a hum, little hump here. Same thing on the other side. And this is where the back door hinges. I don't know what happened there, but you have these little humps. Makes absolutely no sense. It kind of looks odd in not a good way. Let's put it this way. But we have the Corolla humps, and of course, we have the giant shark fin right here. I don't understand shark fins. They look good on sedans, but on hatchbacks, they kind of look odd. That's just the way it is. Now, I like how they integrated the rear view camera in the, underneath the emblem. Kind of looks natural. If they put it on, in front of the license plate, it's too low. So they kind of integrate it there. I wish uh, we get to a point where we see Toyotas with hideaway cameras. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, but that would be nice so they wouldn't get dirty and all that. Something interesting about this, initially when you come to this car, if you're not familiar with it at all, you expect the handle to be here, but it's actually all the way down here. Pretty low, and that's something I wish they would have put the button right here, it would make more sense, but they put it pretty low down here. Let's talk about the interior of the 2023 Corolla, and there are some updates here. The first one is we have a giant screen in the gauge. I suppose that is the fashion that's going on in the automotive industry. However, something has to be said. It's not a very good screen. I mean, other than 
it being a screen where you can check your box and say we got a screen in the dash it doesn't really do much i mean you can't display your navigation clearly you can't really use it for anything else a little screen on the lower trims does exactly the same thing other than that the major change and in my opinion a semi good one is the radio so for the longest time, Toyota have had their old system, and many people bragged about it, that it was not good, it was all this. And you know what? It worked, but it was not perfect. It was not the latest and the greatest. And here we go. We have the latest and the greatest in the 2023 model. So this operating system is the same as the Toyota Tundra, the new Tundra. You know, very nice system, very responsive, have a lot of features, a lot of custom customizations. And the most important thing, wireless Apple CarPlay. So this is the typical fashion of Toyota where their lowest model has more options than their highest model. That's just how they do things sometimes, but the Corolla has wireless Apple CarPlay, finally. Now, while many people will be very, very happy with this new radio system, it is glitchy, just like the Tundra one, and there is a few things to it probably will be resolved by software updates, but that's the thing with a new system. It's going to have new problems, and the more it has, the more glitchy it'll be. For example, something that happened during my test drive of this 2023 Toyota Corolla, all of a sudden, the Apple CarPlay just disconnects, and it won't allow you to reconnect until you stop the car, put it in park, then it reconnects, then we go again. That can be very annoying, because this is one of the biggest features that it has, but it is glitchy. Hopefully, some software updates will fix that, but that's something to be said about these newer radios. Otherwise, this interior remains unchanged, and that is for a very good reason. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. See, this interior is not meant to wow the owner and make them feel like they're special. This is an interior that's supposed to work, and in that department, it works very well. Super comfortable car, very easy to operate. There is really not too much going on here ac controls very simple laid in front of you anybody can operate this the coolest thing is this is a corolla and it has dual climate control so you do have some cool features you have heated seats no cooled seats in this this is a higher trim the xse no cooled seats but the, everything is physical button down to the giant shifter which is a cable operated shifter this stuff equals less complication, equals more reliable long-term. Electronic parker brake, brake hold. That is nice to still have that. And something else that's slightly changed, but I guess it's insignificant. The warning chime when you start the car did change. Let's take a listen to that. Folks, the 2023 Corolla is nice the interior is functional it's not an exotic car it's not something that's going to wow you but it is a nice place to be it's very comfortable works very well that you won't feel like there are things that are really put there just to make them look cool and they really stay in your way the only exception of that is the little hump on the side of the dash that in certain driving positions if you get out you're going to hit your knee on it that is something remains from the previous pre-update Corolla and it is still here and a major update that happened to this and although this has nothing to do with the interior but I figured I put it in this section this has Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 again Toyota loves to do this where they introduce the latest tech in their lowest grade car they love to do this they've done this in the past we go back to 14 Corolla that was the first Toyota to have standard LED headlights and here we go again. So something about the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 is very good. It's not nothing like Tesla's autopilot and all that, but it is improved. And you notice that improvement if you use the previous system, the 2.5 plus. First thing is there's something new to this. This now is a one touch cruise control. So in the past, you had to turn on the cruise control, then hit set. It was a two step process for some reason. Now it is a push of a button. You just push it, cruise control is immediately engaged. You hit the brake, you hit cancel, whatever the case may be, it disengages. So it's not no longer a two 
button process. It's a single button operation. Works really good. I think you will notice some updates in the way it works and the way it responds. There's little things that they changed, but the biggest thing is the change does not equal, we have 17 other components. No, we still have the front recognition camera. We still have the front radar sensor. They have been updated. The software has been updated, but we did not add 17 different components to make this new update, which is good. Let's take a look at the back seat of the Corolla hatchback. Now, this of course is a small economy car. This is my seating position. I mean, I barely have room. I am 5'7", just to give you a reference. It is not very comfortable here. Of course, this is a small hatchback. But one thing that is interesting, and this is where things kind of get modernized. You have two USB-Cs here. Usually in cars of this size, you have nothing in the back, but at least they give you something in the back. This probably is not the most comfortable place for tall adults, probably kids. Again, it's a Corolla, it's a small car. But one thing that is interesting, all the windows are auto up and down. I suppose there is where things kind of get made up to you with having the tiny space, you have auto windows up and down all around. Let's take a look at the back of the Corolla hatchback. Now the space here is not what you call big. And there's some issues here actually. The floor is way too high. It does make loading easier because you're not going in, in into a dip, but it's way too high. Now the reason why it's high is kind of, that's why we're on the fence on this one. The reason it's high is because you have a proper spare tire here. It's not a full size, but it's a pretty large donut here. I suppose this is the sacrifice you have to make. Do you want the spare tire? Then you have to have the high, kind of the limited space here. If you don't want it, then I suppose then this would be bigger, but this is very small. And what makes it even worse is the fact that this is slanted this way. I mean, basically all this space here is only usable till this height. You put anything higher, it's gonna hit the door. Again, they went with this design and I, I think it looks good. We talked about it, but this is the compromise. We make this cool swoopy design in the back. Well, you lost a lot of your storage in the back. That's the problem here. But one little thing, and I like it when Toyota thinks past their small box because Toyota sometimes super conservative. They don't like to kind of think of the little details. You open your spare tire. We've all been there, those at least that have spare tire. This is in your way and you're fighting, but they put a little tiny little hook here where you can hook your spare tire door and now it's out of your way. You can get your spare tire. It's these little things that make you think they really thought of everything. Not everything, but it's a small touch. You know what I mean. Let's talk about some things I do not like about the 2023 Toyota Corolla. And this really has nothing to do with the car itself. It has to do with some of the choices that Toyota made when it comes to this model. First one is we finally have a higher trim hybrid model in the sedan, but we don't have none in the hatchback. So if you want a hatchback, you're actually stuck with two trims. We're back to this kind of singular models and it, they have no options. You only have the SE or the XSE, and they're both very expensive, especially the XSE, which has no sunroof, and you really can't option them out in any way, shape, or form. It's just, here it is, you can add some accessories, and that's it. And this madness costs $28,000. Well, what if I don't want some of the options? I don't want heated seats, I don't want the... Well, no, this is all you get. So we're back to square one. Yes, you have more trims in the hybrid model, but now you have no trims in the hatchback. And I don't know what they were thinking with that. And the problem is at $28,000, some people will say, yeah, well, the car market's going up, but that's deep into Camry territory. That is almost into RAV4 territory. And that is very comfortably into the Corolla Cross territory, which is to me, bigger than this, it's more comfortable, it's more focused. There's no thrills or SE or XSE or whatever. It's focused. So this is the problem with the, with the Corolla hatchback. Now, the thing is, at least in my humble opinion, if you're gonna buy one of these, buy the sedan. You have an LE model, if you just want, kinda you're on a budget, it still has almost everything this thing has. 
just won't have the fancy wheels and the fancy XSE badge, but it'll have everything else. It has the, the good engine. It has the same features inside. It's functional. It's great. It's a great first car. It's a great car for a small family. Why would you pay the premium of the XSE when you have a choice of the exact same car with a trunk? That's what I don't get where Toyota is going with these trimming and the optioning and things. And I feel like when it comes to the Corolla hatchback, they kind of spent all their budget in the Corolla, GR Corolla, which don't get me wrong, it's a brilliant car. I really like it. And I, finally, a true halo car. But then the regular model kind of lost all its options. You have just two trims. That's it. So usually with halo cars, you'll have the halo model that is super expensive, understandably so. And then people who kind of look up to the halo model, they'll want to buy the regular one just to say, I have almost the halo model. But in this case, you can't buy one with a hubcap. People don't want the big wheels and all these options. People just want kind of a budget option that is a hatchback that is well, well, you can have that here. Interesting choice from Toyota. So what is the final verdict on the 2023 Toyota Corolla? Let's talk about the hatchback first. As a car, this is a very functional car. It's very focused. It's, it actually has good amenities. It's not the biggest car in the world, but some folks will want a smaller car, easier to park, easier to drive and whatnot, and that's all fine. But there's something of, of a problem here. And I, I'm assuming you have seen it throughout this review. For the fun, exciting model, we have the GR Corolla. I'm sorry, this is hardly the exciting car. I mean, it's not fast doesn't really handle well, and it was never designed to do that from the beginning. So why the insistence that this be a sport model? Why are we insisting that this is only in an SE and an XSE trim? This is a sporty car. It is not. And now worse, we can't even get it in the manual transmission. So this is the problem with this car. It is kind of going after the wrong direction. Should this be an LE model, an XLE, you know, nice interior, subtle exterior? It already looks good. I think it looks good. But I don't know why they insisted on it being a sport model. That's a problem because that only drives the price up and you're not getting anything for that high price. And the other thing is when you have this and you have the sedan, I'm sorry, the sedan makes more sense, especially especially now, because in the sedan, you can get the LE. If you don't want all the bells and whistles, you just want basic transportation that is reliable. It is a very decent interior. It is comfortable. So why would anyone buy the hatchback when you can buy the sedan at a lower price and not have to deal with all the sportiness? And if you want the sport model, buy the GR Corolla. It's as simple as that, because this is might somewhat look like the GR Corolla, but it's nothing like it in any way, shape, or form. If they come up with an LE model, XLE model of the hatchback, I think it will be a lot more appealing than just the SE and the XSE with no option to option them out in any way, shape, or form. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.